Well, joining us now are our guests in Jerusalem, Rabbi Yishai Fleischer. He's a radio host at Israeli National Radio and co-founder of Kuma, an organization that promotes Jewish immigration to Israel. And in Ramallah, Rabbi Abu Latifa, he's the media and communications officer of Al Haq, a Palestinian human rights organization. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, Rabbi Fleischer, if I can start with you, what do you make uh, of what has happened, of the eviction of these settlers from this house? Well, it's a very sad thing. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Jewish settlement in Hebron is uh, the Jewish people's attempt to return to their ancient homeland. And we have a house that was purchased. And now the Israeli government, which does not want to see Jewish people living in Hebron because they're not interested in, in a Jewish presence in Hebron because they don't want that kind of consciousness, that kind of uh, Jewish way of thinking, which is a Bible-related way of thinking, which is a historical way of thinking. They don't want to see that. They want a Tel Aviv state, not a Hebron state. And therefore, uh, the army, our army, our citizen army, has been used against us uh, to evict Jewish people from their, rightfully, uh, their rightful inheritance and their rightful purchase. And it's a very sad day for us. But, but, but is it? I want because to tell you that as long as Jewish Court blood... on November 16th ordered the settlers to vacate the building. That's actually not correct. Uh, the, the court said that uh, the government has the right, if they so wish, to evict. Uh, they didn't say that they should. Uh, it's contested, and the question of the purchase of the building is still in the courts right now. And, you know, I don't think that that's the main issue here, because I think that that's a pretext for, for what's actually transpiring. The real issue is the Jewish people's right to live in Hebron, which is contested right now by the American government, uh, by the Palestinians, by people in the Israeli government. But our Bible tells us that this is our okay, first well, well, Robbie, authentic Abu Latifa, purchase our what's heritage. What's your reaction to that? Do you agree? Well, actually, uh, before I came to the studio, I didn't expect a more twisted narrative of, of what's going on in Hebron. And uh, when your guest is speaking about the Bible, uh, apparently he supposed that the Bible is the reference for everybody else in this world, but that's not true. Uh, coming from a human rights organization, uh, our work is based on human rights values and principles and international law. We see all people, whether they are Muslims, Christians, Jews, as equal, and they have the right to, to live in their houses, on their lands, in respect and dignity. The settlers in Hebron are illegally being there. They are occupying Palestinian houses. These houses belong to the people of Hebron, and they, these houses are not theirs. So the whole discussion about the, this human, human rights, rights organization, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't really fit human, in the Human rights for, for purchase for everybody else, but not for point. Jews. Human, human rights for sure. everybody, but human rights doesn't mean to occupy a house that doesn't b belong to you. And according to international law, your presence there in Hebron is actually a war crime. Your government is responsible for that. And why would a presence be a crime? Leaders why would, a, why why would somebody's okay, presence you, you be a crime? Fleischer, speaking about human rights, let, really me, let me ask you this. Um, yeah. What do you make of the behavior? I mean, I'm, you're talking about human rights. Yes, Fleischer, let me ask I'm, you. I, I don't want to change topics here. I want to answer this question. Of, of, what do you make I, of the behavior of some of the settlers? They've been throwing stones at Israeli troops, attacking Palestinian houses. They I don't, I don't like a lot people. of the behavior that happens here in the Middle East. There, this is a violent region. I don't like the violence of the Palestinians. I don't like the violence of uh, the Jews. I don't like the violence of the Americans who get in our way and try to solve uh, our issues here for but us instead of letting us talk face to face. But that's not the point. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. Your other guest said that he's all into human rights. What about the rights of people to live where they purchase or where they, where they deserve? What's wrong with Jews living in Hebron? Why is that illegal? He just said that it's illegal by international well, law for Jews very to live in Hebron. Why, That's why, crazy. Why, it's a why would it be, why would it be illegal for people to live families somewhere? families that actually were kicked out of their houses. These, these settlers didn't come and build houses uh, so been and Jews. lived there. They kicked, they kicked Palestinian families and they took this, their places. As, it's as simple as that which makes it illegal and makes it a yes, crime. Yes, and, and the Palestinians are living today, the Palestinians are living today in houses that have, still have Jewish stars from the 20s and from the 30s. It's a known okay, thing that many people are so let me ask you was, this. Tell us a little bit about what life is the like Jewish for the Palestinians of Hebron. Right just just a moment, Hebron. Yeshai Fleischer, if you could just hold life? on right there, you'll get mm -hmm. your turn to speak. But let me put yeah. this point to Rabbi uh, Abu Latifa. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about uh, life of Palestinians in Hebron. 
Okay, uh, first of all, I want to say that I was born here in 1980. I've been here for 28 years. Your guest came to, to this country in 2003 okay, from the US. Okay, but if you could just answer and the question. And now he's, he's talking, exactly. Well, okay, uh, life in Hebron, in short words, just a moment, is Mr. Fleischer. Night. When I was a young man. It's a nightmare. This, this, and this thanks to Mr. Fleischer, to if you can stop right there, if you can stop and just uh, let Ms. Rabulatifa finish his point, you will get your chance to speak. Okay, uh, in short words, life in Hebron, and thanks to the Israeli settlers, is a nightmare for the Palestinians. Uh, people are present in their houses. If you go to Hebron, first of all, it's not easy to enter Hebron because the 400 settlers, of course, 400 settlers du during the daytime, because at night most of them go to their colonies, like uh, the colony of Kiryat Arba, which is close to Hebron. They just, in, like, systematically humiliate Palestinians. They harass them on the streets. Uh, the, the kind of harassment may vary from uh, from verbal harassment to stoning people on the streets, to uh, attacking people's houses, uh, to throwing garbage on, on people's heads, uh, preventing people from leaving their houses or preventing people from entering their houses. These 400 settlers during daytime, again, I repeat it, are protected by 1,500 Israeli okay, Mr. Yishai Fleischer, soldiers. let me put that point to you. Can you really uh, justify the kind of behavior that uh, Rabbi Abu Latifa describes? Mariam, I'll tell you something. The question is, why are the Jews there in the first place? And if anybody had a historical perspective around here, then they would understand what's going on here. The Jewish people have been yearning to return to their ancient homeland for a long time. And our tiny little strip of land in the, the Middle East here about the is under... If you could just the Excuse me, excuse me. I'm answering the question because it comes out of that. It comes out of that. When you have 23 Muslim countries all around in a tiny little Jewish country that's under constant attack, then people react when they're being pushed out of their natural heritage and their authentic home right. So, so you know, we, we feel under constant threat. So you have people who react and push back against it. You know, we're not going to be pushed out of our country. As long as there's Jewish blood in Jewish veins, we're going to stay here and we're going to keep on going to Hebron like we have for the last 2,000 years nobody's going to take that away from us. This is our land, and the Arabs know that, and they have Mecca, and they have Medina. This is our holy city, and we're going to stay there, and we're going to make a peace with the Arabs, but with the understanding that this is our homeland. We're not going to make peace by giving away our, our heritage. Yes, that's a very nice well, kind of uh, you know, sentence that you just throw out there, Mariam. People, people throw that out there all the time. It's illegal. What's illegal about it? Why is it illegal to purchase land? Why well, is it illegal to live in a city? In this Why would the Palestinians case, it's not want Israeli to have Jews? Law as well. No, it's not against Israeli law. There's a big community in Hebron that is living on their ancient purchase land. The Israeli land, Supreme and we have Court ruled against the Bible. it. They Don't ordered the settlers to evacuate Bible? the building. So they ruled, against, they ruled against this particular house. That's one incident, but there's a big Jewish community all around there. And it had just had 25,000 people come there on a Sabbath. The reason is, is because this is our holy city. What if somebody ruled that Mecca and Medina is occupied that, by the that, Muslims? That is, is that not right? Mecca and Medina are not the issues this is our that we're land. discussing right now. No court, no international so court. Basically, what you are no saying is that court people can rule against are based our on their religions. Uh, that doesn't really work in... And, and this time, the, the word has changed. Uh, this land is holy for Christians and Muslims as well. How convenient now to be secular. everyone want to refer to his Look book... OK, and, gentlemen, and say, if you can just that. hold your horses, because it's, it's time for a break now. But when we come back, does peace stand a chance with expanding settlements? We'll be discussing that. Stay with us.